you suffer enough that something inside you goes undone. And I'm my lucky because I hit that point before I lost really the things that were the most important. It was not my career or money, it was my relationship with my kids. And when I felt as if it impacted them, I recognized it. It, it was the worst day of my life. I made amends. And I, I, for a while, I thought maybe this is temporary. Maybe this feeling is going to go away. But since that day, I swear to Christ, I have not ever wanted to drink once. Ever. Wow. So it's the easiest thing in the world. Because every time I think about it, I'm just like, holy shit, that's the worst thing in the world. I don't want that. I can't do that. And that's the piece that people find. So now I'm that asshole who's like, you know, I'm grateful. I learned a lot. I actually got to be a better person through this process and I've lost the obsession. You know, I've never been a big drinker. I don't drink. Um, I, I'm lucky that it's not something that's that's a strong draw for me. Me too. I, you know, I have friends that are recovered alcoholics. Um and, you know, their lives are so much better as a function of being sober. But for non-alcoholics, I mean, I think everyone should just know the uh, the health risks, especially women where the risks for breast cancer and other types of cancers are, are elevated so very much. And what was interesting uh, to me about the response to that episode is that I think many people took it, my, the impression I got was that many people took it as permission to finally stop drinking or drink less because they didn't enjoy drinking. And as you, so- you know, beautifully put out on social media, you know, drinking is one of the few activities that if you don't partake, people assume or accuse you of having a problem. And it's just wild. I mean, like, why would that be? And I think that, I think it also make, w once actually I was out to dinner with a colleague years ago and I declined a, drinking that evening. I was just talking to the, the visiting speaker and um, she said, God, that's so boring. I drank in search of happiness and in search of a lifestyle that I thought would bring me to happiness. Um, it didn't. And I woke up one morning going, wow, I've drank a lot, but I'm still not happy. What's that about? And, um, you know, now we're about a year and a half later and it's, and my life has been as turned around uh, immeasurably. It's a wonderful thing. And I, I say to anybody watching or, or you're listening to this, that, you know, it's, um, that there is a lot of pressure on young people, not, to drink necessarily, but to find happiness through going out and getting mashed, <laughs> like, like, and and I'm sh and that's fun, and you have a good time, and good luck to you. But if it doesn't work for you, and if you keep waking up going, hmm, I don't seem to be having nearly as good time as most of my friends, uh, then you know, then think about it. It doesn't have to be something you do. Drinkers don't like people who don't drink because it takes the fun out of it for them because there's this idea that's, you know, prolific on college campuses. Like if everyone's drunk, that somehow like the entire like vibe of the party is going to take on a new, new flavor. And, and frankly, I remember I went to a, a college, UC Santa Barbara, where at the time people drank a ton, a ton. It discovered alcoholics, you know, right? Um, and I used to go to parties sometimes. I'd look around and I'm thinking like everyone here is just blast it in your late 20s you stop drinking stop drinking yeah very difficult no beautiful unbelievable better oh are you kidding i would never be sitting here with you no way no chance because because i wouldn't have been able to have access to myself or other people or even been able to take in other people uh if i hadn't changed my life no way and i never would have been able to have relationships that i do i never would have been able to take care of my father the way i did when he was sick so many things thank you bradley bradley just put his daughter to bed and rushed over here to do this he's he's a sweetheart i got sober because of this guy and every day has been happier ever since i was running to things to avoid to avoid tough feelings, painful feelings. Um, I just didn't know how to deal with them. And looking for anything I found that I, I, I use for escape, to escape, I guess, difficult feelings. I don't know how better to describe it. I mean, that can be anything. That can be drugs, booze, Netflix, <laughs> you know, snacks, um, anything. I don't want to be, I don't want to, at this point, to be running from anything. I want to be, I want to sit in it, I want to feel it, I want to get through the rough night. And I found um, in doing so, you just, you come out the other side with, a, with a, a more profound understanding of yourself, a, a greater gratefulness for um, those in your life and the birds and the trees and everything else. I, I had a habit, and I don't recommend this, I had a habit of going out about once a month and I would tie one on. You know, absolutely. Infrequent, um, but binge. Yeah, I never, you know, I, my 
tolerance to alcohol was always such that I would get drunk quickly and then sober up really fast. So I was drinking late into the night, um, but then I'd sober up really fast. Now, of course, we know the sleep you get after even one drink is vastly diminished. Every and, single person right. that's got an aura right. or a whoop strap right. or something is right. feeling you right now. Um, and I think that alcohol to me um, never felt good. I never liked it. And it was a recipe for, you know, there was a lot of fights. There was a lot of, you know, there were a lot of bad stuff happens when people are drinking Dude, too much. I've, I've, you know, I've drunk run- driving to say nothing of poor decision making. Yeah. I mean, I, to me, it just feels like there's so, there's so many better ways to have a good time that, that, that alcohol isn't necessary. I'm sure this must have happened when you decided to stop drinking. You must have thought this isn't good. I'm not going to be funny anymore. I thought that. I okay. thought I thought there was going to be ramifications. Yeah. Okay. And so, what were they? What what you, what did you what did you foresee happening? I thought I wouldn't be funny. I thought that people wouldn't like me. I thought that um, I wouldn't be able to meet girls if I wasn't drinking or or you know or having drugs or. Um, right. So that was things. what you were afraid of giving up if you stopped drinking. Right. What were you afraid of happening if you kept drinking? Um, I was afraid of not achieving my dreams. I was right. afraid of, you know, uh, ending up a drug addict. I yeah, was afraid so, of, hurt, okay. of dying in my sleep. Something, you know, dying under the influence. Okay, so there, so there, yeah, it's not like that doesn't happen to comedians. Right. I was practically homeless. Like, how I, old were you when you, when you I was 24 uh, when I got drinking. sober. Um, but, you know, I came out of school and I had wanted to be, you know, it's a funny thing too with the hubris of youth and, and of, me in particular, like I came out of school thinking that I would come to New York and New York would be like, oh, now we understand, like, welcome. And they, New York was like, what? Like, and I, and I was a big failure early on with like some, I had a theater company, I had all these artistic pretensions and I basically wound up being, not being able to make any money, not, people not liking anything that I did and just being, you know, practically kicked out of my apartment, unable to support myself, unable to hold down like a waiting tables job. Uh, my friends all started to abandon me because I was very angry and, and a horrible human being to be around. Um, and then finally, like my girlfriend, who I never thought would leave me, like left me. And so I just got to this point and I was about to be kicked out of my apartment. It's that awful thing that you hear every alcoholic talk about. And if they don't talk about it, they're lying. Like it's, you just become an awful human being. Like you just, um, you're selfish. Was there a moment that was like the crystallizing, uh, like, oh yeah. Yeah, I mean, I was gonna kill myself. And then, really? you know, I did, oh yeah, yeah. But I didn't have the, you know, I'm gonna say courage to do it. Like I didn't have the, uh, I had a cat and I was, afraid. this is a funny thing where like, I actually had a, a baby cat. And I remember reading somewhere that if there's a dead body in an apartment, because I didn't have any friends too, so my body would have stayed in the apartment for maybe weeks and nobody would have discovered had I, I paid my rent. And I was like, apparently dogs won't eat you, but cats will eat you, <laughs> they will eat your body. So, so why quit drinking? So I don't end up in hell. Mm-hmm. Hey, there's a reason. There's a reason to stop. And then if you make that hell real, it's mm-hmm. like here's all the details of my personal hell. Yes, let's avoid that. Right. So then you have something to run the hell away from. Right. So now you to have something towards. towards and something to run away from. And I'll say this too: as you, for if there's any young men or women out there who are listening to Jordan, feeling like, well, I still, I don't know if you know, if I start doing something different, like my friends are going to act a certain. Yeah, they are. They are. Yeah, yeah. That's but you're right. also you're going to start creating conversations. You're going to become the intrigue because you're going to be bringing something new to the table. And you're also going to find out who your friends are. Yeah. Because if you're starting to put your life together and you have friends that object, those are not friends. Those are just people you know. And that for many people, it's so part and parcel with um, relaxing and with festivities hmm. and with feeling comfortable and with drawing a boundary between the normal day and the rest of the day. That's and, interesting. There's and, a ritualistic aspect to it. Yeah, there's this sort of, it divides the day in an interesting way. So I'm not judgmental of it. I. But um, for me, I mean, I've, I'll go to a party where people are drinking and just hang out. I'm perfectly good. If you're trying to get your life together and your friends get in the way, that's actually real useful for you because you've now identified who your friends aren't. Mm. And you might think, well, I can't give them up. It's like, oh, yes, you can. And not only can you, you should, and it would be better for them. Because if they're aiming down and they want you going down with them, 
there's nothing good about what's happening to them, and there's certainly nothing good about that for you. Yeah, they're not going to, and then they're going to learn, wow, if I, I'm going to lose friends if I continue in these directions. Yeah, yeah. There were times I was like, man, I could never be a sober person mm -hmm. because I'm afraid of, you know, I can't communicate with women or I'm afraid to, you know, stand around in a circle with tough guys without having like a beer in my yep. hand, you know, or like all these little crutches, you know, yep. I can't. And then I remember when I got like 90 days sober, I was just like, holy shit, man, like, it was like the first time I'd ever done something uh, like for myself, yeah, you know? Yeah. And it just, man, it felt, it felt unprecedented. Yeah.